Hi, my name is Mr. Evangelista, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about stoichiometry uh, for IBCAM SL. We're on objective 1.1, which is the particulate nature of matter. Now, stoichiometry, if you can see here, stoichiometric relationships, it's one of the larger topics that's recommended in terms of teaching hours, 13.5 hours, and there really is a lot of it on the IB test. And here are a couple of things that you guys are going to need to know. Let's get right on into it. Uh, matter, we, we can categorize it into two categories, pure substances and mixtures. We'll notice here that uh, there are two types of mixtures. We have homo or same evenly mixed composition, homogeneous mixture, and we have heterogeneous mixtures, which have a non-uniform composition, kind of like boba milk tea. It's uh, not distributed evenly, no matter how well you mix your boba. We can make mixtures into pure substances through several physical processes and here are some of them uh, we can filter we can use distillation we can use magnetism paper chromatography or gel electrophoresis to separate these mixtures into the pure substances just a quick little note on fractional distillation so when we mine oil or petroleum uh, it has several different uh, it needs to be refined and so we can use fractional distillation based on the boiling points of the various components of the oil. We can actually, uh, you know, um, separate them into various different containers so they will uh, boil into the gaseous phase and then condense back into a liquid back into these containers. That's how fractional distillation works. Once we have our pure substances, those are uh, distributed into elements and compounds. Elements are like atoms and molecules. Notice they're only made up of one type of element. So you have neon or ox an oxygen molecule, which is diatomic, has two atoms, but both those atoms are oxygen atoms. In compounds, you've got molecules, which are two nonmetals, and they're covalently bonded together. So here we have H2O. Again, two different atoms now for a compound. We have ions, sodium and chloride, chlorine, two different two different uh, atoms. These are going to be a metal and a non-metal. They are uh, held together by an, by an ionic bond. As we go on, let's take a look at the three phases. There is a fourth phase, which is plasma, which is more of an ionized gas that we see a lot in space, but for the most part, we're going to focus on solid, liquid, and gas. As we move down this way, we are increasing the temperature, and temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy. So as we increase the temperature, we're going to have more energy as we move from solid to liquid to gas. In solid, we can see the particles are packed closely together, and in the gases, they are far apart. Also, notice, uh, take note of the shape and the volume of each of these. The strongest intermolecular forces are going to be here, and the weakest intermolecular forces are going to be over here. As far as notation goes, we have S for solid, L for liquid, and G for gas. AQ, which stands for aqueous, just means dissolved in water. And so when you're writing your chemical equations, it's a good habit to make sure that you are writing the state symbols in there. You'll also be needing to be familiar with the uh, terms for the phase changes, such as melting, freezing, uh, gas to solid is deposition, solid to gas is sublimation. So make sure you know these terms as well. OK, um, this is a phase diagram. And so um, as we increase the energy, we can see for a solid, if we put more and more energy, let's say heat, if I add more and more heat, the temperature is going to rise until it reaches a point to where we are. The temperature is no longer rising, but we're still adding more energy. So even though we're adding energy here, we can see the temperature is not rising. And that's because at this point, the bonds between the molecules are absorbing that energy. And we're putting energy in to break those bonds. So the bonds between these particles are being broken to go from a solid to a liquid. That's why the temperature is not increasing, because those bonds are um, receiving that, that energy. And as we go to a liquid, we go in here again we have the same thing where energy must be put in to break the, uh, the bonds between these particles to separate them into gas. And that's what this, that's what this plateau represents. 
So the hottest liquid water could ever uh, become, um, you know, at this pressure, at this normal pressure, is going to be uh, this, which is about a hundred degrees, going uh, boiling from liquid to gas. In when when the when we're at normal pressure, that is. Uh, a pressure cooker works because you can actually increase this level, increasing the temperature. Okay. Again, we said that can, uh, temperature is equal to the, is a measure of the average kinetic energy. And so when we're looking at two particles that are, this, um, have different masses, if these two particles are at the same temperature, or at the, they have the same energy, well then, one's going to have a larger m value. So this equation is one half mass times velocity squared. One's going to have a larger mass. The smaller one is going to have a smaller mass. And so that means that uh, these are in, indirectly proportional. This one's going to be faster, and this one's going to be slower if they're at the same temperature or if they have the same average kinetic energy. So if these are two gases, and I put these gases in the corner of the room, and I go to the other side of the room, um, this one would hit my nose first, so I would be able to smell this one first before I was able to smell this one. Another thing we're going to go over is the law of conservation of mass. Um, this states that mass can neither be created or destroyed. So the mass before the reaction has to equal the mass after the reaction. Um, we can see that the, we have lead nitrate and potassium iodide before, and then we have uh, lead iodide. Let's see, we'll have lead iodide and potassium nitrate at the end. Is that what I said? Potassium iodide and lead nitrate. And then we'll have lead iodide and potassium nitrate in the solution afterwards, double displacement. Okay. So let's practice uh, balancing a couple equations here. Let's do a combustion reaction. Here's methane, and for combustion, we take a hydrocarbon and we mix it with some oxygen. And it will always produce two things, carbon dioxide and water. So let's balance this. I have one C, one C, that's good. Four H's, so I need four H's here. Again, with balancing, uh, you can only change the coefficients. You cannot change these little subscripts. Oxygens, I've got two here and I have two here, so I need a total of four there. Let's do another one. Let's do combust ethane this time. And I'll show you guys a little trick when you run into some problems balancing equations. So two carbons, let's get two carbons over here. Six carbons here, let's get six carbons over here. Notice that I have seven oxygens on this side. Now oxygen is diatomic, meaning it comes in two, so I will never be able to get to seven uh, in groups of two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double everything. So that will become two, that will become four, and this will become six. Okay. Carbons are, are at four, hydrogens are at 12, oxygen now is at six plus eight, um, 14. So this needs to be seven. 